Got another set of questions for the organic nitrogens compounds playlist. So this one contains questions about nitriles, amines and amino acids. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so first question, we've got some information about this reaction of 2-methylcyclopentanone with this mixture of sodium cyanide and acid. So which is the correct statement? In the mechanism, the CN minus ion accepts an electron pair. No, that's wrong because the CN minus ion donates an electron pair. It's a nucleophile. So that means B can't be right either because it's going to be nucleophilic there, not electrophilic. It's actually nucleophilic addition. Moving on to C, you'll notice I've drawn up the product of the reaction. So the organic product has one chiral centre. Well, that's not true because we've got a chiral centre here and that's also a chiral centre because there's a hydrogen not shown in that skeletal formula. So D's got to be the right answer and it is indeed the molecular formula for this product is C7H11NO. So D is the answer. Moving on to the next question, I've drawn up all the displayed formulae for the molecules. So let's just work through each one and see which one's got the bond angle of 120 degrees. So A, we've got 109.5 around these carbons here. And then this nitrile group, it's 180. So it's not A. Moving on to B, we've got 109.5 here, here and here. Whereas this angle here for the oxygen is 104.5, so it's not B. Moving on to C, so we've got 109.5 here, but there's 120. So this is the answer. We've got 104.5 there, and these are all 109.5. We might as well look at D for revision purposes. So 109.5 and there and there, whereas around that nitrogen we've got 107. Next question, which reaction is not a reduction? Well, this first one shows the reduction of nitrobenzene. Reaction B shows the reduction of the nitrile group to the amino group. Reaction C is the substitution of this halogen for an amino group. So that's our answer. So we'll just do D for revision purposes. What's going on here? We are reducing a ketone to a secondary alcohol. Moving on to the regular questions now. So optical isomerism is when you have molecules that are non-superimposable mirror images. And the next part, we've got to draw the 3D diagrams to show the optical isomers of alanine. So from the table, it's got the R group CH3. So I'll draw my first one here. So I'm drawing an empty tetrahedron. And then I'm just going to put my groups on. So I've got a hydrogen. We've got a C or OH, doesn't matter what order you put these in. I've got an NH2 and I've got that R group, so CH3. And then all I've got to do is mirror what I've drawn. So that means the H will go there, the NH2 will go there, CH3 there, and the C or OH will go there. Like I said, it doesn't matter which way round you draw the groups on the left-hand one, so long as your right-hand one is the mirror of what you've drawn. Next part, how many optical isomers does threonine have? So there's the R group, again, from the table. So you'll notice I've just drawn up a displayed, a sort of displayed formula uh, for threonine. So you can see we've definitely got a chiral centre there because we've got four different groups of that carbon. We've also got a chiral centre here. So because of that, we've got four possible optical isomers. And if you're interested, the way to work out how many optical isomers you can have you raise 2 to the power of the number of chiral centres. So in this case, it was 2 to the power 2, which gives us that 4. So moving on to the flow chart now, I'll start with this bit here. So we've got the molecular formula for an ester, and we've got the molecular formula of where it's going to. So if you think about it, where could we put the ester group? Well, it could go here. The only problem with that is you're going to introduce another oxygen. So means the ester group's going to go here. And then if we think about the difference in atoms, we've got an extra two carbons in this and an extra four hydrogens. 
So if we took that hydrogen off there, we could put a C2H5 group after that O. So that's the answer. So then if we think about how do you convert that ester to that, well, we've got to break this bond here and make it a carboxylic acid group. So we hydrolyze it with an acid. So aqueous H plus ions is fine, or you could go HCl, AQ, something like that. So moving on to this bit now. So we know that this is an acyl chloride. There's only two oxygens in the acyl chloride. Well, we need that one there because we need a C double bond O. So the obvious thing to do is to just get rid of that OH group and put a Cl there. And that will actually give us the, um, the molecular formula that we need. So there's the structure of that. So how do you go from an acyl chloride to a carboxylic acid group? So that's the only change. You react it with water. So moving on to the bottom half of the flow chart. So if we focus on, we, we need to get to valine. So we need an NH2 group here. There's no change around there or there. So what needs to be in here? Well, we know it's a haloalkane. It's actually a bromoalkane. So we need to stick a bromine here. So that's the answer for that part. How do you bring about that change? You need to react the alcohol with um, sodium bromide in this case and sulfuric acid. So for the final part now, how do you go from a haloalkane to an amine? You react it with ammonia in ethanol. Moving on to part C, so you'll notice I've added some numbers here. So these are all the carbons and how many hydrogens they've got attached. So what's the molecular formula of ibuprofen? It's C13H18O2. Calculation now, so we're told one ibuprofen tablet contains 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. How many molecules are in one tablet? So we need to know how many moles we've got basically. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate that. So mass over MR. Just be careful, mass needs to be in grams, but they've given it in milligrams. So mass over MR, we've got that number there. So I'm just keeping the full number in the calculator. That's why the dots are there. Next thing we do is multiply by Avogadro's number to find out how many molecules that is. So we'll get a calculator value like that. And then we've just got to put it into three significant figures. So it's going to be 1.17 times 10 to the 21. Moving on to part D. So I've got the beginnings of the answer in the box. Um, it's not the final answer. So we need to just think, how can these interact with each other to form this salt based on ibuprofen and lysine? The other important thing to bear in mind is it's a one-to-one -one molar proportion. So this is an acid. It can donate a proton. This is a base. So is this, by the way. So we've got two base groups. These can accept a proton. But because it's in a one-to-one -one proportion, we can only put the H plus on one of these groups. So that's the answer for the negative ion. The positive ion, you could either draw that or you could draw that. And finally, why should these tablets based on the salt of ibuprofen act faster in the body? Well, they're charged, so they're going to be able to dissolve in water more easily.